Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura Fino here and today I'm talking about books that are perfect to read on a rainy day. So one thing that I love to do when I'm reading is I like to try and match the book that I'm reading to the atmosphere that I'm in. So if I'm in, in the middle of a snowstorm at home, I love reading a book that's set in winter and that gives me those like really cozy, wintry vibes. Same with Halloween, reading spookier books. And I especially love rainy day reads. There's just a certain kind of atmosphere that comes with a rainy day that I just really adore. The kind of setting where no matter what season it is, if it's raining, you just sit down with like a little throw blanket and a hot or cold drink and a book that just perfectly suits that kind of mood. There's not really a certain genre that fits that mood. It's just kind of more of a vibe, I guess. Uh, for me, this, it's, it's kind of hard to explain what vibe that is, but to me it just makes sense that these are books that just make sense to read when it's raining, either in one sitting or over several days, but like I at least start them when it's raining and they just somehow perfectly fit that kind of mood. These books are often set when it's raining in the book, so like, I guess it makes sense there. Or like I like to read a lot of like pirate books or like watery themed books. Either that or kind of more sad, heavy hitting books or certain types of darker gritty fantasy and especially children's books. I find children and middle grade to be so fantastic to read while it's raining. Yeah, so as you can see just just by that description, there is really no one specific genre that's perfect for rainy days. It's just really about the vibe of the book. Sometimes it's the setting or the characters or the atmosphere of the book or the plot. There's just something about these books that are just perfect for curling up on the couch and devouring them mostly in one sitting or just reading all day while it's raining outside. And so without further ado, before I, I ramble too much about my love of the rain, here are some books that I would recommend reading during a rainy day. Now this first book that I have to talk about is actually the reason that I wanted to do this video because this book has such a special place in my heart and, and it's because I had such a fantastic reading experience for it and that was The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Jabosky. Oh man. <laughs> so this book I read so long ago, I think it was at least eight years ago now I read it, but I remember reading this book so perfectly. I'd been trying to read it for a couple of weeks and I wasn't really getting into it very much. I was a bit less than halfway through and I remember this so well. It was a Sunday morning, it was summertime, so I had my window open and it was raining just very lightly and one of my neighbors down the street was playing guitar on their porch so I could hear this really soft guitar music being played and I just decided to pick it up and I finished the rest of it in one sitting. And, that, and just that whole experience of just reading this while curled up in bed, still in my PJs, and the sound of the rain and the guitar in the background, it was just magical and I fell in love with this book. And this is kind of the book that made me fall in love with like Rainy Day Reads was this one. And now like eight years later or however long it's been, every single time it rains I think about that day that I spent curled up in bed reading this book. It was just such a magical book. I loved it so much. Uh, it's a very tiny one. It's super short. It could easily be read in one day or in one sitting. Um, so it's really just a perfect rainstorm book. I loved it so much. Uh, the plot of this one is basically just this kid in high school going through a hard time and you know trying to make friends and just really coming of age. At its core it's just a coming of age story. It's a found family that kind of thing. Which now, that is not at all my thing. I would never pick this book up now if I hadn't read it before. But even though I don't read the genre anymore, this book still, I still love this book. It's still one of my absolute favorites of, of all time, even though I don't like the genre. That's how much I love this book. And my love of this book largely comes from that rainy Sunday morning where I read the majority of this book. And this book will just forever have a very, very special place in my heart because of that. Next up is The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovic. Really th this whole trilogy is a perfect rainy day read, but I'll just talk about the first one here. So this is a, it's another YA contemporary that's very, very hard hitting. There are a lot, a lot of trigger warnings for this series, so definitely look those up before you go and pick this book up. But this is a YA contemporary about basically just high school students who were on a sports team, but they're also involved with crime lords. So <laughs> there's really, there's a lot more to it. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. Definitely very hard hitting contemporary. This series is one of my favorite series of all time. I adore this series so much, which again, surprising considering I don't read why contemporary anymore, but I just love this series and the characters meant so much to me. And I, I don't think that I read any of these three books like on a rainy day, 
but thinking back on them they would be the perfect books for that just sit down and just read the whole series in one day if you can because again they're not super long and while they are very heavy hitting and very serious topics they're they're very easy to get through um they're they're just so addictive that i mean you could easily fly through this series in like a couple of days max if you loved it that much so like this is definitely a series where you could totally just sit down and on the couch when it's raining and just eat them up i love them so much i would also recommend haroon and the sea of stories by salman rushdie for a lovely rainy day read this is a children's novel i don't quite remember what it's about to be honest but i just remember like reading this book and really loving it it just felt it just, i just fell in love with the writing style it's very whimsical and just really fun. I actually read this for a class that I took in university on children's literature. And this one I did actually mostly read in one day. Um, I was supposed to have this book finished by a certain date and of course I procrastinated all of it. So I read a lot of it in one day and it was just lightly raining outside. And it was just so lovely. But the kind of like whimsical nature of this story was just really, really nice. And it totally suits a dark gloomy day even though it's not really a dark and gloomy story it just kind of fits that vibe really well i find something about it just really suits perfectly for a, for a rainy day so i would definitely recommend this one as well next up is the scorpio races by maggie stevewater this one is really the setting of this one that makes it perfect for a rainy day this one is set on the fictional island of thisby but while reading this i totally thought that it was scottish it just feels very scottish or uk i guess i don't know turns out it's not it's actually in a fictional place but it's a very like rainy gloomy kind of place i believe it's on an island so it's pretty much always raining and just the the kind of like fairy tale feeling of this book really lends itself well to reading this on a rainy day the setting of this one stands out so much but basically this book is about a town where once a year they compete in the, in the Scorpio races where they tame water horses called Kapalishka and they race them and it's very deadly very very deadly a lot of people die because these are like monstrous water horses they're terrifying but they're really cool and as a scene is like this like brave thing thing that men do but our main character is a girl named Puck who competes in the races I believe she's the first female to ever compete in the races she has like some really good motivations for for uh, competing but our other main character his name is Sean and he also has some very good reasons for having to win the races only one of them can win that's kind of like who are you rooting for here but anyways this book is fantastic and definitely a perfect read for a rainy day then we've got Pan's Labyrinth the Labyrinth of the Fawn by Guillermo del Toro and Cornelia Funk this book is based on the movie Pan's Labyrinth directed by Guillermo del Toro and I loved the adaptation of this. It was it was incredible. The movie and the book just pair so nicely together. The movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. I absolutely adore it. It's it's one of those cases where like one's not better than the other. They're both just so perfectly perfect together if that makes any sense at all it probably doesn't but if you've seen pan's labyrinth or read the book adaptation then you can probably agree that like this is a perfect book for a rainy day the fairy tale-esque nature of it and the setting is really perfect for a dark gloomy day it's a very dark and gloomy kind of story um, combined with that whimsical nature of a children's book. Again, very dark, very gritty, sad kind of book. There's like no joy to this book or the movie. It's, it's very sad and like pulls up the heartstrings, but also it's magical and just, oh, it's, it's like my perfect kind of story. I was hyped when this book came out. It, oh my gosh, I was, I was so excited. And the book as well also has illustrations in it which are absolutely stunning. They are so, so beautiful. So if you've had this book on your shelf for a while and you haven't picked it up yet, on your next rainy day, I would definitely recommend picking it up because you will not regret just curling up and reading this book with the sound of the rain on your windows. It's truly a beautiful book and also a movie. <laughs> Next up is Spellbook of the Lost and Found by Moira Fowley Doyle. This one is set in a very small Irish town where things have started to disappear randomly and they just kind of appear co in completely random places. People are very confused, they have no clue what's going on and like why things keep keep disappearing until one of our main characters finds a spell book and learns that that's probably why things are, are disappearing is because somebody cast a spell. This is a multi-perspective book. I think there's at least four different perspectives if I can remember properly. But um, this book is stunning, it is so beautiful, and again, 
this setting is perfect for a rainy day, especially just kind of the vibe and the whole mood of it. It's set an island in this super small town. They spend a lot of time in the forest and it just feels so perfectly magical that sitting down during a rainstorm would be so perfect for this one. I don't think I read this one during a rainy day, but I definitely would have liked to. I definitely want to reread this book one day. So I think whenever I do, it'll definitely be one of those rainy day reads. But this book was so stunning. Oh my gosh, it was beautiful. <laughs> this is like, without a doubt, one of my favorite books of all time and it's largely just because of the atmosphere and the setting it was just so magical I can't explain to you like you can just you can just feel the magic coming right off the pages of this book every word every sentence is just infused with this, with this kind of ethereal beauty to it and I just oh this book just stole my heart it was incredible I really cannot recommend this book enough next up is the Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis so far I've only read one of the books from this gigantic bind up but this is just another case of the children's novels being perfect for rainy days. I'm not sure what it is about children's books. For some reason in my head they are the perfect thing to just curl up with when it's raining outside and this one is no exception. I don't think I need to go into detail about like what this book is about. I'm sure we all know the Chronicles of Narnia. I'm like the only person in the world who hasn't read this series yet. But yeah man just children's books they're just so good for like a dark gloomy day. I, maybe it's just like because they're children's books they're not as dark as a lot of like adult and YA books are that it, they're just kind of more fun and lighthearted and kind of like creates a balance between like a dark gloomy day and like a you know more lighthearted book. Maybe that's it? I don't know. But I love it. Next up is On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. I actually just finished this one this morning and it was beautiful. Visually this book was stunning. I've been reading it over the last few days and it's been super rainy so can confirm that this is a fantastic book to read in the rain. This is a sci-fi graphic novel. It's very gay. It's amazing. It's one of those books where it's like a random group of people on a spaceship who become a found family, which is a trope that I weirdly love. I don't know why or like when that happened, but I love that trope. And I liked this one and for that reason, like the, the found family aspect, but mainly this book is really about the visuals for me. It's absolutely stunning. It is oh, always beautiful. The art and the world are incredible. It's a very quiet kind of story. There's, there's not a whole lot of plot to it. So if you like character driven stories, definitely check this one out. In terms of like plot and characters, I didn't really love it. I ended up giving it a 3.5 star. However, the art and the world really saved this one. Like that's why I loved it was because of those two things. The world in this one is just so unique and beautiful. While reading this book I had some very quiet atmospheric music going on. I, I, there was the rain in the background and it was just so perfect. It was a perfect reading experience even though I didn't love the book that much. Regardless I still definitely recommend this one for a lovely gloomy rainy day. Second from last is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahirin. This book takes place in France, I think in like the 1700s. This one is about a witch and a witch hunter who are forced into marrying each other. He has no idea that she's a witch and she is just waiting for him to find out and murder her basically. So the reason that I picked this one for this video is because the, the setting of it is very dark and gloomy so it's perfect for a rainy day. I know I just said that I like children's books because they don't really match the mood of a rainy day but sometimes I like when my books do match the mood of that and this is definitely a, a good example of that. This world is very dark and gritty. While I was reading this book my like mental image of what was going on in this book was for some reason in like black and white. It was very gray and dark and just constantly raining in my head. I'm not sure if the book was described that way or if that was just how my brain interpreted it. But regardless, that's what this book made me think of was just a lot of rain. So this would definitely be a perfect read for a super rainy day. I didn't love this book. It, you know, it's definitely a very, very polarizing book. You either love it or you hate it. I kind of fell more towards the disliked side in terms of the actual plot, but the vibe of this book was fantastic. I love the atmosphere of it, so I definitely recommend this one if you like fantasy romance at least. I'm not a huge fan of fantasy romance. I didn't realize that, that this book was going to be mainly romance when I picked it up. I thought it would be more fantasy, but uh, it turns out it was mostly romance. So that's my own fault. That's like really nothing against this book. It just I just didn't do enough research into it to be honest. But for those of you who do enjoy heavy romance in your book, this would be a perfect book for a rainy day. And last but not least is All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stiefvater. This book is interesting. I didn't actually enjoy it while reading it, but looking back on it, I love it. I have absolutely no idea how to explain the plot of this book. 
And honestly, I think you should go into this book not knowing what it's about. Just pick it up and read it blind because there's really not a way to sum up what this book is about or kind of how it makes you feel. It's very strange and like for some reason it's perfect for a rainy day even though it takes place in the desert. I'm not really sure how that works but for some reason it does. Uh, this is just such a strange book. It's strange is the only word for it. It's just fucking weird. Okay, reading it I was very bored and confused throughout the entire thing but looking back it's a really beautiful book even though I have no idea what actually happened in it. The whole vibe of it was just stunning and whimsical and just magical and beautiful and all those adjectives that I've used like a million times so far. But yeah, this one is a really good example of a book that is perfect for a rainstorm for some reason. I don't know why this one works, it just does. <laughs> That's basically all that I can say about this book because I have no idea how else to describe it. So just take my word for it. If you haven't read this one yet, save it for a rainy day and you will not regret it, probably. <laughs> and that is it. Those are my recommendations for books to read during a rainy day. There are a whole lot more. I really, really love rainy day reads. They're just so perfect for me, but I had to limit myself here. I had probably like 10 more written down that I was going to mention, but this video would be way too long if I did that, so. <laughs> but that'll do it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I, I hope you all have a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. I hope you enjoyed these recommendations let me know in the comments if you've read any of them. But otherwise, I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye!